In Bird Hall at the University of Iowa Museum of Natural History is an exhibit like no other in the United States. Shortly after 1900, Homer Dill of the museum staff visited Laysan Island, an uninhabited Pacific Island, part of the Hawaiian archipelago. The Northwest Islands of the Hawaiian chain are few and far between. Honolulu, Hawaii is 800 miles away from Laysan. Laysan is a tropical coral island, less than two miles long and a mile across. In the center of the island is a large lagoon of salty water and beach rock lines the western shore. The rest is all a mixture of sand and bird guano. The vegetation is low, you see no trees. There are several grasses, including the tall bunch grass Aerogrostis. Only 26 species of plants are present on this island. It does not have heavy rainfall. The astonishing sight is the bird density. They were estimated at 10 million. These birds are of two sorts, the larger seabirds and the smaller land birds. There are 24 species represented in the McBride exhibit. A moment's thought will suggest that the seabirds are visiting the island during the breeding season, a place for courtship, nesting, and rearing the young. They range far across the sea after the young mature. This enormous crowd of seabirds could not possibly be supported by the food resources of the island. They get their food from the sea. The powerful flight and strong beaks tell us this. The crowding also tells us that they have no enemies on the island. There are no snakes, foxes, or hawks. Look at the even spacing of the birds. This is a small radius of ownership. They defend this territory as far as they can peck from their nests. See how each of the seabird species has partitioned the island for nesting space. The most abundant bird on the island is the sooty back tern. They nest on the bare ground on one of Laysan's beaches. The most colorful species is the man of war bird. The red pouched male is shown here sitting on a scavila bush. And notice the nest underneath with a Laysan finch. This is a vertical partitioning of space. On another part of the island is a large rookery of Laysan albatross. Two of these are facing each other in a courtship posture. The white-breasted shearwater nests underground. See the hole for the nest amidst the Laysan albatrosses. On yet another section of the beach are the huge black-footed albatross. They too are already rearing their young. There are also five species of bird here that made their living from the land, not from the sea. They each arrived here by chance and evolved to become unique species native to the island. The numbers of the land birds were far fewer than the seabirds. Unlike the seabirds, these smaller land birds had relatively poor powers of flight. To survive on a windswept island, a bird must either be a strong flyer or it had better not fly far. The Laysan rail ran after insects. Its small wings were incapable of flight. There are well over 100 species of insects and they are present in large numbers. The yellow birds are Laysan finches. Their stout beaks enable them to eat seeds as well as insects. The finches on Laysan also exhibit a very unfinch-like behavior. They will eat carrion or even the contents of seabird eggs if other food resources are limited. The small gray miller bird shown here on a clump of bunch grass and the red honey creeper are insectivorous land birds. Though miller birds found on continents eat mostly insects, honey creepers are named such 
because they drink the nectar of flowers. With only tiny grass flowers on Laysan, honey creepers had to adapt to a different type of diet on this island. Out on a lagoon on the center of the island, you can see the Laysan teal, a type of duck. It fed on insects along the shores. All the evidence suggests that these five land bird species evolved right here on Laysan Island. Homer Dill revisited Laysan in 1911, around 10 years after his first visit. It was at that very time being destroyed by a man, not deliberately, but without thinking. Matt Schlemmer and his family spent years here digging for fertilizer and harvesting eggs for shipment to Honolulu. Though the island had been decreed a national bird sanctuary in 1909, Schlemmer had some rabbits shipped out, which he let loose. He had wearied of a diet of fish, birds, and eggs, and he dreamed of starting a rabbit canning empire. Though it is reported that he released only eight or nine of them to nibble on the vast areas of grass, they multiplied faster than Max could manage them. They nibbled away nearly every blade of grass and leaf on the island. Not only did this leave the rabbits with no food, but it removed the food base for the insects, which were the food for the land birds. Three of the land bird species became extinct. The last few starving rabbits were finally exterminated in 1923. This plague of rabbits also destroyed the nesting sites for the seabirds, which went to other islands to court and nest. Laysan Island was barren and dead, littered with the white bones of birds and rabbits. This tenderly balanced ecological system was demolished by the insertion of one wrong cog in the machinery of that system, and it was torn apart. Adding to the tragedy, poachers continued their long-standing tradition of raiding the island and slaughtering uncounted thousands of the remaining birds to take their feathers for fashionable plumed hats. By the 1950s, the Laysan vegetation was largely restored. The seabirds came back to court and nest. The Laysan teal, which had been reduced at one time to seven birds, had recovered somewhat, and the Laysan finch as well. But gone are the three extinct species of land birds. The Laysan rail, the little red honey creeper, and the inconspicuous gray miller bird. In the last several decades, biologists have continued to visit the island and they have watched the remaining birds go through new trials. The biggest threat to the seabirds is the garbage which ends up in the ocean, which is eaten by the birds and washes up on the beaches as waste. The Great Pacific garbage patches are at least the size of Texas and the currents converge to dump much of the waste in the Northwest Hawaiian Atoll. The species of albatrosses found on Laysan are most affected by this, as every single bird is likely to have at least some plastic permanently stuck in their digestive tract. And this phenomenon is resulting in the death of around one third of the chicks. The endangered populations of Laysan finch and Laysan teal are also suffering from the degradation of their environment due to trash washed up on the beach. Cleanup and conservation efforts are continually underway, but Laysan Island and its species remain endangered. The unique exhibit in McBride Hall may soon become our last link to the rich ecological history of this tiny Pacific island.